Hi, I'm Jacques DeVaux from Audio Kinetic. In this quick tip video, we're going to show you how to manage positioning and distance attenuation. All of this functionality is provided on the positioning tab in WISE. First of all, let's talk about center percentage. By default, the surround configuration will play sounds out of 4.0 and not doing anything in the center speaker. This control allows you to set in percentages directly to the center speaker. So things like dialogue, definitely you want to use this to make sure your dialogue is coming out of the center speaker. Now, if we look at the 2D options, 2D will basically play sounds based on the original source configuration. So what that means is stereo will come out of the fronts, 4.0 will come out of the fronts and backs, for example. You also have the ability to offset that panning as well and how that plays through the speakers by using the enable panner option. So by enabling that and then pressing edit, here you can actually go and offset the volumes and position exactly where you want that sound to play in your surround configuration. You also have the ability to assign real-time parameter controls to the 2D positioning as well in the panner. So here I can basically create a new parameter based on 2D and have it pan from the front and rear. So here I could basically select, let's say, the stealth factor parameter and then just simply create a curve which would be mappable via RTPC at runtime from the front to the back speakers. So let's go back to the positioning tab and now take a look at some of our 3D options. The first thing to note is that WISE independently manages the positioning and the distance to attenuation of sounds. If we look at the attenuation, this is managed when used by attenuations. I've just popped up the attenuation editor and here I can actually configure the attenuation of this sound or the roll off based on five different curves. There's a drive volume curve which is basically a standard attenuation, a wet volume curve which is optional which allows me to control how much reverb uh, is being used for that particular sound based on the attenuation as well, LFE which allows me to send uh, to the subwoofer based on distance attenuation, low pass filter and finally spread which allows me to control whether the sound is point source or uh, spread across several speakers over attenuation as well. So if we go back and look at the dry volume curve, you'll notice that at the very top of my attenuation editor I have this little handle that looks very similar to a real-time parameter control. So this basically allows me to simulate my current attenuation curve. And like every other curve in WISE, you have full control over adding points, and also customizing the curve types as well by simply right clicking on them. You also have full undo functionality as well. Let's take a look now at this section here called the cone attenuation. This allows you to simulate directivity of objects so if a robot is talking to you for example he's obviously going to sound uh, different if you're standing directly behind him. So that's what you can specify here is basically an angle, uh, an inner and outer angle which specifies uh, additional attenuation so in this case I have uh, additional volume attenuation and you can also use low pass filter as well. And this of course can be simulated directly in the attenuation preview. So if I was to preview what that would sound like. So here we're starting to hear the interpolation range of our volume attenuation. And if we simulate being directly behind the robot now because he's facing this way. Here I could optionally add some additional low pass filter if I wanted to as well. You can also simulate this as well by clicking on the black bar and rotating it. That way you don't change the actual distance of the attenuator as well. So that's how the attenuation is, is edited and controlled. And that's, that's really sort of the fundamental part of this. The positioning source now can be determined by these two settings here, whether the sound is user-defined or game-defined, and I'll explain that in more detail. By default it's game-defined. Let's take a look at user-defined. Uh, user-defined is really where the source is determined by the sound designer. So This editor allows me to create a path or a point. So here I can define a path if I choose by creating a series of points. Uh, you also have controls which determine how, if you had a list of several different paths, you also have play types similar to the random container where I can sequentially run through the list, pick a random list, a uh, random path and so on. We also have random range offsets which allow me to define a random range to my point. So in this case I have a single point, I can specify random parameters so each time a play occurs this single point will be offset by these values here. 
You should probably also work, if you're using uh, cone attenuation, you should enable these options as well because this really shows you your radius. So you'll hear your roll off, which you determined in the attenuation editor, and any cone attenuation as well. So by enabling these options, you can actually uh, have a visual representation of what you're hearing in this particular view. So I'll close this. Uh, and another thing I should mention here is this follow listener orientation. This determines whether or not uh, your, your sound source is going to be following the microphone in game. Uh, by default, this is on, and you have the option of disabling that. So basically, as the object moves around, or as the microphone moves around the game, these objects will maintain their positions that you've set up here. And the final option for positioning source is game defined. Uh, this is basically the game which will determine the position and the orientation of the object based on what's happening in game. So that's it. That's a quick look at how you can manage positioning and distance attenuation using the functionality provided in WISE. Thanks and see you soon.